All right, guys, welcome to the final recording for week nine in Introduction to C++. This video is the assignment brief for assignment four. I'm in the weekly learning week nine folder, and you can see here, you can click this hyperlink to get taken to the assignment brief, or you can click assignments and tests. And then in the assignment for functions, 5% folder, we'll be able to find the assignment submission link. The PDF is here, and it also comes with a main.cpp file that you can download as a starter template for this project. So this is due next week, 11.59 PM, Tuesday, November 16th. It's worth 5% of your grade and all the instructions are here. Okay. Besides that, all the instructions are also in the main.cpp file that I provided you right here. Okay. So we'll go through both of them and I'll be able to answer any questions you have. So congratulations, we made it through a lot of material already in the first semester. Hopefully you've got a pretty good grasp of the basics in C++ functions and how they work. So now you're ready for this challenge. It won't be too easy, but it won't be too difficult either, hopefully. So remember the challenge we had for major assignment one, where I asked you to print a menu with adding a number to a list and being able to list uh, the smallest number, the largest number and display it back to the user. In that challenge, we had to use vectors of integers and we wrote a menu driven system that allowed the displaying of all of those numbers in the list. We learned how to use control flow statements like loops and statements. Um, yet for this challenge, we're gonna actually solve that problem all over again, except this time our solution is gonna be modularized, okay? In terms of using functions to do things. So you can start your solution and refactor it so that it uses functions. Okay, so you can use your old solution or you can start with mine that I just posted in the main.cpp file um, on Blackboard that you can download from the assignment folder. Or you can start it from scratch, it's totally up to you. Okay, so let me give you a few hints and tips with this assignment. Remember, it's not super easy. So if you get frustrated, just take a break and then come back in a little bit with some fresh eyes and fresh hands and work on it later. Okay, so a couple hints here. Create functions for each of the major functions in the program. So if you think about the program and think about the major blocks to it or the major actions that a user can perform, that's how you're gonna come up with the functions that you need to create, okay? Keep functions small. Don't make a function that does everything in one function and then call that function. You wanna keep them modularized so that you can reuse that code or call that function for something specific. So a print function, an add function, right? Remember the boss worker analogy. So you have your boss, which is the main function and it calls all of its workers, okay? Keep the vector declaration in the main function and pass the vector object to any function that requires it. Don't make it a, a global variable, okay? Don't move it so it's outside main and that would really just defeat the whole purpose of this exercise. You need to keep that in main function and then make your functions pass the vector as an argument. Okay, so that's another hint. So you can start by defining, defining a function that will display the menu. So that's a really simple way to start. You function call, display the menu, and that's all of that. And then you put that in your loop, the do while loop, so that that menu function gets called in the do while loop. It's basically a bunch of output statements, and then you can call that function whenever you need to display the menu. So you don't have to write the menu code over and over and over. Then you can define a function that reads the selection from the user and returns it in uppercase. That way we don't have to deal with checking between lowercase and uppercase selections all the time. So you can make a function that translates to uppercase. Cool. Um, then you can start by creating some functions for each menu option. So the add, the smallest number, largest number. And then finally, you can create a function that displays the list of numbers. And we call that function whenever we want to display a list of numbers, a function that will calculate the mean and a function that will calculate smallest and largest, et cetera. Take it one function at a time. Don't try to do them all at once. Don't try to like brainstorm it in some crazy way. Just do one function at a time. Start, start small and work your way up. Again, if you get frustrated, take a break. Finally, don't forget to use prototypes, what I talked about this morning, where you define them at the top. Um, and then you can declare all your functions underneath your main function. To use them, um, it basically will allow the compiler to help you every step of the way, okay? So good luck, I know you can do it. Um, and when you open the main.cpp that I gave you in the template, 
we can read through this same kind of instructions. Here's the hints that I gave you again. Do not move the vector outside of the main and don't make it a global variable. You can start by defining function displays the menu, then from there, go on, etc. Take it one function at a time and uh, don't forget to use function prototypes. Okay, so basically the same kind of instructions. And then here are the old instructions from the last assignment. Your program should display a menu of options as follows. Print, add, display the smallest, largest, and the mean, um, et cetera. And then it gives you all of these things for valid choices. So these are the same instructions from major assignment one. You'll remember them. Um, remember to test your program at the end. Some of the programs I marked from major assignment one, they didn't actually loop through and show the menu a second time. Use a vector. Um, and then, yeah, again, if you wanna extend your program, then you can do those as well. So here it is, here's how uh, this works right now. If I run it and I test this, Oh, I'm back. Okay. Interesting. Very strange. Very strange. Hopefully you guys can see and hear me. Where did I cut out there as I was talking about the assignment? Sheesh. <clears throat> I don't know what happened. My thing just stopped. I, th I believe I'm still recording. It says I'm still recording. Okay, so I just gave a demo quickly of the template and the code that comes with it. None of it is in functions and it works like so. I can print the numbers. If I hit print, the list is empty. If I add a number, it says 50 was added. If I display the smallest number, then 50 is displayed. If I display the largest number, 50 is displayed again. If I add a number and I add 30 and then I display the list, we can see I've got 50 and then 30. And then if I hit Q, it says goodbye and I quit the program. So that's the working template I gave you, but you just have to add this code into its own function. I'm not sure if I already covered this and you're seeing it now for the second time in the video. Um, my WebEx just crashed. So I thought I would just give another explanation of that, but the old assignment explanation is here and the new assignment explanation is here where it's talking about modularizing it and refactoring it to use functions. Okay, any questions about that, email me um, at benjamin.venergon at georgiancollege.ca. Did I miss anything? Did I cut out? Just let me know in chat quickly before I end the recording here. Um, does that make sense? Did it, did it actually share my screen the whole time? I don't know when I cut out. Um, it seems like my WebEx crashed there when I was recording, so I'm not sure what exactly happened to the video. Um, so let me know if that makes sense, if the assignment brief makes sense to you guys. The submission is on Blackboard and it's due in one week from today. Does that make sense, guys? Can I see some thumbs up or, or anything like that? 
Yeah, perfect. Okay, glad to know my thing is still recording. I'll end this video here, post it to YouTube, and put it in the assignment folder as well. So there's that.